let's go ahead and get started. Uh, yeah. So I was wondering if we could start with a little bit more about you, where you're from. Yeah. So um, I live in Trondheim, which is in uh, the center of uh, Norway, the same place as Christian Van Wyk, Bovar Witsen, uh, Børre Lorange, and uh, Julian Satter. Yeah. So we have a nice, uh, a real nice community here for, uh, for juggling. And uh, how long have you been juggling? I've been juggling for um, over nine years now. So, um, yeah, if I could tell a little bit about this. Um, uh, in September 2007, um, <clears throat> when I was, let's see, I think I was going in fourth grade on school. And... Um, uh, and then one of the sixth graders, uh, they had a, a show. Um, and, uh, um, yeah, they were doing some dancing and some uh, singing and other things. Um, and this one guy, he was juggling. Um, so uh, I went home and I found uh, myself uh, a couple of uh, juggling balls. Or not juggling balls, just some balls really lying around. Um, and I tried doing two in one hand because I saw how we did that, and I couldn't really figure out how to do three. Um, so um, I did some two in one hand and two balls in two hands. And then eventually I tried some three ball shower uh, because I understood how to do that, even though it was really, really hard. Um, and some months uh, later, um, it was this um, a student uh, that lived uh, at our place for one or two weeks, and she knew how to juggle. So then she thought, uh, taught me how uh, how to do three balls, and then it just kept going. But um, I didn't really get my first juggling equipment until over a half year later um, on my birthday, which is in April. So April two thousand and eight is when I got my first juggling equipment, mm. um, and it was it was really from that point on that it really took off. Um, so when I I learned how to juggle three balls in late 2007, but I didn't really start uh, until um, April 2008. Yeah. That is awesome. And uh, we'll talk a little bit more about your journey, but let's start with where you're at right now. What are you most excited about when it comes to juggling right now? Yeah. Um, so lately it has been a lot of numbers. Um, I can't lie. It has been a lot of numbers. Um, especially with clubs, not with balls, uh, but a little bit with rings and a lot with clubs. Um, but the last month, um, I have, uh, I haven't gone away from it. No, um, I'm still doing it, but, uh, I focused a little bit more on the lower numbers, if you could say that. Um, so still numbers, but not, um, uh, 11 or 10. Uh, objects plus, but I focused a lot more on uh, seven to nine rings than usual, uh, which I think um, is really good to get um, to get a, a better fun foundation before uh, I try to reach for uh, the twelve ring flash, because right now I've just been pushing it up and up and up and up, and um, I haven't really gotten a lot of the um, the foundation that's necessary to do. Uh, those f futures, no futures. So um, yeah, so now I'm kind of doing more tricks, uh, getting longer runs, uh, and uh, I think that's been really good. So uh, sometime soon again, I, I will probably go for the twelve ring flash. But on clubs, I'm still still going for eight and nine clubs and trying to push it further. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sweet. Okay, I want to ask you a question, and that is, uh, what why you prefer clubs over balls or clubs and rings over balls. But before you answer that, I'm just asking so I don't forget. Um, everybody else that's here, if anybody can uh, take the link to this and just post it in a public place, just to remind people that um, we've got Ivan live because some people might have forgotten and want to see it. And also, you can win nine Norwick balls. It's the same as usual. Just ask a question and uh, that'll enter you to win. So, yeah. So, anyway, Ivan, why do you uh, prefer the clubs? Um, I, I could say that one of the reasons could be that um, 
it is because everybody do both. It, it, it yeah, it's it's not um, the only answer, but I also think it's a lot more fun. That that's the main part. It's I think it's a lot more fun than balls. I feel that there are more possibilities, um, and yeah, I just have a a better time or a more fun time uh, doing clubs than balls. Yeah, it's just more enjoyable, I guess. Uh, I don't really have another thing to say about it, but um, but also um, when when I'm practicing juggling. Um, one of the reasons that I focus a lot more on clubs than balls is because uh, when I'm in a in a practice space, uh, it, juggling clubs is no problem. But uh, when I'm on a trip and such, um, bringing the clubs is quite complicated. And also, juggling outside, um, uh, yeah, I don't really enjoy uh, juggling clubs uh, and rings outside because just the slightest slightest amount of wind uh, sets me uh, off and. So at that point, I can do balls, you know, in the summer, I can stand out and do juggle balls on uh, in my yard. But um, when I'm in the practice hall, I can do clubs and I can do rings. I can also do balls, but balls I can do anytime I want mm -hmm. and also at home uh, without any problem. Um, so that's also um, a reason why um, clubs is the main part of my practice. Yeah, it's nice that you have such a sweet space to practice in, too, with the high ceilings. Yeah, yeah, we're real lucky. So to go back to your story, what was it, you, you learned the two balls and you learned three balls, and then what was it that kind of set you off to this, like, crazy, like, you know, to the where you're at now, where now you're just, like, tackling? Well, I mean, you just had that nine-club record, and I assume that you're continuing to tackle, like, high numbers in clubs, um, as you were saying. So what... What kind of what happened from three balls to now that made you want to do what you're doing? Um, I'd say all my life I've um, enjoyed um, pushing my limits um, at pretty much everything. Uh, when I was when I was young, when I was uh, four or five years old, I was practicing doing a um, yeah practicing standing on my head uh, a lot. And yeah, when I was five years old, I could do that. I could stand on my head, of course, with my arms on the floor, but um, without any problem. And then I wanted to learn it to do a handstand. And then some years later, I could do a handstand um, because I was practicing it a lot and I enjoyed uh, improving. And that's the same with juggling. I really enjoy um, seeing myself improve uh, in something. And there's... Yeah, it doesn't matter how good you become. There's always um, um, some room for improvement. And uh, it's always satisfying when you beat a record or when you feel really good at the practice. Yeah, it's always fun. Um, so that's yeah, that's the reason I do it, because I like it. So for you, yeah. you think that uh, it's been really, what's really propelled you forward is just the ability to continue getting better and getting to that next level yeah that's yeah that's the biggest part for me yeah cool for everybody watching make sure you're asking questions so you can get entered to win those norwick balls um and i want you ivan tell us about a moment when everything just felt right maybe it was a practice or a festival or um uh. a, perf a performance where you just knew that you were supposed to be juggling Oh, okay. So a moment in time when I knew that juggling was my thing. Is that your question? Yes. Oof. I don't know, but um, I could probably mention some great experiences uh, if that's an answer. That'd be great. Uh, yeah. Um, like on EJC 2014, for example, uh, my first EJC, which was in Ireland. Um, uh, you know, joining the the fight night, that was really cool. You know, um, uh, battling over juggling and uh, being on a stage and a crazy crowd. Um, yeah, it was real nice. And also, uh, maybe uh, at that convention, uh, um, uh, my biggest highlight was uh, 
practicing eight clubs uh, with the uh, Ivir Trunsta um, because we, we had done our um, three to seven club practice uh, under this area where the roof wasn't too tall. Um, and then we decided, okay, let, let's try eight. So we went further out into the hall where the ceiling was a bit higher. And we started uh, trying uh, to flash eight clubs. And I think both of us had flashed eight clubs one time before. Uh, I'm not sure about Ivid, but at least for me, uh, I had only done it one time. And uh, we stood there and tried and tried. And eventually, Ivid got it after uh, 15 minutes. I know everybody was clapping and uh, it was uh, this big circle around us, which was really, really cool. Um, and That's I just awesome. kept And I just kept going and going. Uh, got really tired um, after a while. Um, but after 45 minutes of trying eight clubs, it finally happened. And also some guys got it on the film and uh, a lot of people was clapping. And yeah, it was a great experience. Yeah. yeah. That's really cool. All right. Um, let's go ahead and do some questions before we do that. Everybody, if you don't win those Norwicks, you can also use the promo code Everyday Juggler, the number two after. Um, and that'll give you a sweet discount at the Norwich store. All right. So uh, from Hannah B, where do you see yourself in five years? Which is uh, a variation of a question I like to ask. So I'm going to modify that a little bit and say, in five years, what do you want to be able to look back and say you accomplished? Okay. Let's see. <clears throat> okay. So uh, I'm, go I'm going to answer this Um in a juggling related way, I guess. Um, at least uh, in terms of numbers, uh, if I could start there, um, would at least be a 12 ball and a 12 ring flash. Um, mm. Yeah, yeah, I, I would like to get those. And the 10 ring qualify, that would pro probably not take too much time, uh, but the 10 ball and 12 ring will take some more. Yeah. And um, I would like, to get um, a routine and also a a big show, maybe a four to five minute show, and yeah, a four to five minute show and a maybe a five to eight uh, minute routine mm. that I'm really proud of, uh, that, that I think is really good, um, and I'm excited to perform because mm -hmm. now I I have some shows, but it's it's nothing that I really feel like. Uh, I'm really proud of uh, presenting this to everyone, and I'm excited to go up on this, that stage. At the moment, it's it's not like that. Um, for me, I get that feeling more on doing videos and just practicing in the hall, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, maybe practicing in front of people. Um, but yeah, I would like to get a nice show, a good routine that I could like, look back on and be really happy about. Sweet. From Fabian Reese, who's the juggler you take the most inspiration slash advice from? Or who do you look up to the most? Okay. Um, who I take advice from and who are or have been my inspirations. Uh, I don't know. They're actually quite the same thing. Um, but th there are a lot of people that have inspired me. Um, a lot of jugglers that I met, uh, but the first one I have to mention is Lauge Benjaminson. Um, he has been a huge inspiration, at least from the early years of my juggling career. Uh, I've watched all of his videos so many times, um, and I'm always excited to see new stuff from him. Um, then you have Thomas Dietz, you have uh, Vova Galchenko, you have Anthony Gatto. David Furman, uh, yeah, yeah, a, a lot of people, mm -hmm. and um, and also Sergey Ignatov, um, of course. And uh, Sergey Ignatov um, has also been uh, teaching me um, one week um, in, let's see, I, I think it was October two thousand and fifteen, um, the fall break. So um, so then I went down to Italy. And I went to a, a to a one week uh, workshop uh, with him, uh, and it was yeah I think four hours each day of the workshop. But then we also um, 
stayed um, for yeah between two and four hours extra after the workshop. So it was uh, six to eight hours of juggling every day uh, for a whole week. And um, he was always there teaching and um, showing the techniques. And uh, yeah, he was, let's see. Yeah, he was pinpointing every single thing that I did. Like everything had to be spot on perfect. You know, if I was like this instead of this, this small difference, he would comment it. And if I was like this instead of this, he would comment it. If I was like this instead of this, he would comment it. It was so, but also it gave me a really good understanding of everything in juggling, how things worked. What is a throw? You know, it's it's not just going up and down with your hand. It's the motion that starts from here with the wrist, and then you go up and you release it the same position as when you when you caught the ball. You catch the ball and you re release the ball in the same position. You don't. You're not going to have your elbow all the way in front of here because that strains your shoulder. But have it a little bit longer back or in line, so that you really don't use your shoulder muscles, but more uh, your bicep. And also your when you're standing, that your knees are going to be a little bit bent, and um, how your neck and head is going to be. It was so many small things uh, that he commented and learned me, and it was really interesting to see how how much research he had done to get uh, the perfect uh, uh, technique, if you could call it that. Um, not always the best looking uh, visually, but at least it's really, really effective. Um, so. Yeah, it's it's not just something that is he has thought of. And yeah, yeah, this is good. But he had everything I asked. He had an answer for. So that was really inspirational. Uh, do you think that the attention to such detail um, discouraged you, or like just made you more excited to take your juggling to the next level? Um, so <clears throat> it was quite fun because, um, or not not fun. Maybe I could say. Uh, because he was really hard on, yeah, on everyone. Um, it took, I remember it took me two hours before he gave me his first compliment, which was not so bad, <laughs> you know? Um, and, and for me, actually, actually it was quite motivating because, um, he didn't just give out the compliments here and there, but. He never gave out a compliment unless it was exactly how he wanted it to be. And um, and I started, and uh, I just had to set my, uh, or yeah, set myself into the mindset that I'm not going to take anything personal. I'm just going to listen. What does he have to say? Okay, I'm not going to get mad or anything. But if he says something nice, I'm going to be really happy. <laughs> that was kind of uh, my plan. And it really worked. Uh, and um, the third day was the first day when it was like, good. You know, what you're doing now is good. And um, I experienced also that it, it was good. I became less tired. Um, my rhythm became a lot better. Um, in the beginning, uh, I, sh I did some s uh, six rings before the workshop started. And, you know, it was solid. But... Sometimes the rhythm was a little bit like this and sometimes good and sometimes a little bit like this, even though I had it in control. But I couldn't really always get the throws to be in the perfect rhythm. But after um, three days um, of not really trying six rings, I just tried it and everything went perfectly. Also six clubs. The rhythm was perfect, even though... Um, Six and six and eight and ten objects are two different uh, two different patterns. Um, they still um, mixed perfectly. So, yeah, what what he said really really helped on my rhythm and also uh, how tired uh, I get from doing endurance. Mm. Awesome. From Anthony LeBlanc, what's the best pattern in your opinion? And which props can you do it with? Let's see. 9555 five, five, and 756. Five. Um, 
yeah, those are patterns that I would say are nice looking. Um, I could uh, do both of them with clubs. Yeah. Um, okay. So tell me about how, one way you've seen juggling change your life for the better. Um, oh, it's, wow. It's, it's a hard question. Uh, one way it changed my life for the better. Um, it has given me work. Uh, that's one thing. Um, the last years I have been teaching um, some juggling uh, in, um, in, on this, in the circus school. And also having some shows. And yeah, so um, if you look at the, the little, little business side uh, of mine uh, in terms of juggling at the moment, uh, it has been positive. But also uh, just teaching people how to do it and, um, and, and see their faces glow up as they uh, manage to do things. And, um, and also I really like when uh, I meet them again I, and I've seen that they have been practicing that's really rewarding and seeing guys that doesn't have a lot of confidence um, in yeah, basically everything that would when uh, people finally finally accomplish what they've been trying to do and looking at their faces, how, how happy they're becoming, how their face just glows up. It really gives me a lot of energy to, to teach them. Yeah. Sweet. Well, let's do a couple more questions. Chris Hauschild, what has been your favorite convention that you've attended? My favorite? Um, I, I would say, let's see. I'm not sure what year, if it was 2010 or 2011, but the Norwegian Juggling Convention, uh, the first one that I went to, I think it was 2010. Um, and then we had we had only one juggler that wasn't from Norway, and that was Lauge. Um, Lauge Benjaminson came, and yeah, it was super fun. The first big convention ever for me, and yeah, I would say that that's the best one. Yeah. All right, from Mark Schneider, do you think you'll ever qualify nine clubs? Yeah, I think so. Um, I'm not sure, but I, I think that I've gotten 18 catches, maybe two, one or two times. Oh, no, wow. not catches. No, not catches. I'm sorry, throws. Um, um, but um, I'm not sure because the pattern turned out uh really messy, and mm. I'm not sure if I. Uh, but because I did nine more throws after the flash, but I'm not sure if I threw the nine. Uh, right ones, maybe mm -hmm. through uh, someone else, but 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 I'm pretty sure that I've done 18 uh, throws, uh, at at least 16 um, sometimes. Mm. So the pattern is, yeah, it, it's runnable for <laughs> for for some extent. So it should be possible, okay. but it would take some time. Yeah. From Mike Moore, do you agree with Sergey Ignatov about your or even the potential to flash 11 clubs? Um, no, <laughs> at, at least not what he said about, uh, I'm not sure if I wrote it, uh, on, because it was just, uh, published this, uh, written interview, um, on, um, eJuggle, is that what it's called? eJuggle.org? I'm not sure. Uh, he said that, uh, he believed that I could do 11 clubs, uh, but it would take a long time, at least one year. Uh, that, that's what he said. I was like, one year is not the long time at all. And also, um, I'm not sure. No, I, I don't, I don't think I'll ever flash 11 clubs. Um, I'm not sure if it's really worth it. Maybe, maybe it's possible for someone to do with, uh, baby clubs and maybe with, yeah, nine in their hands, maybe two in hol two in holsters. Uh, it's, yeah, it's so much to do really. A lot of stress. All right. Um, so anyway, so Sergey thinks that you can do it, and he thinks that it's going to be easy for you, really. I mean, if he's saying you can do it in one year, um, and yeah. you just got done explaining how, like, he like knows you're juggling like intimately. Um, yeah. I don't know. That, that must be a a cool. Whether it's true or not, it's a cool thing to to hear. Yeah, it, it's really cool to hear. Uh, 
but at the same time, he uh, never did more than five clubs. Mm-hmm. You know, even though he did eleven rings, he, um, he he doesn't have the same perspective on numbers with clubs as uh, a lot of other guys do. So, yeah, yeah. Um, Hannah B, are you excited for Israel? For Israel, yeah, for uh, the Israeli juggling convention, yeah. I'm really excited. I'm uh, leaving uh, next Monday, I think, um, and uh, I'll stay there uh, the whole con- convention. Or n- not actually not the last day. I'm leaving in the morning on the last day. But um, yeah, I'm really excited for it, and it would be be nice to get a a, a vacation with uh, a lot of sun. Yeah. Sweet. All right. Um, so everybody, our sponsor today is Norwix. So big thanks to Norwix for sponsoring this episode with Ivan. Ask a question. You'll be entered to win some balls. You can also use Everyday Juggler 2 to get a sweet discount at the site. Ivan, do you use Norwix, right? I use Norwix. Yeah. How do you like them? Yeah. Um, I, I could actually tell from the beginning. Uh, because I, I was a beanbag juggler before. I used uh, sport goals and G-Balls, which are both really good beanbags. I have nothing bad to say about them as beanbags. Um, but then when I came to back from Hawaii, um, which uh, I lived in for one year, um, everybody in Trondheim had switched from a sport goals to, uh, to Russian juggling balls. And I was like, what? Why are you doing that? You know, because it was only Kristian van Wyk who um, who used Russian balls, which he has done a long time, as long as I can remember, at least. Um, but, you know, I was like, okay, well, let's try him out. And um, the Russian balls made it um, a lot more fun for me to juggle balls, uh, because I didn't feel like balls had a lot, a lot of possibility, which it, of course, has, but that's the way I felt. But... When I got the Norwex, I could suddenly do um, uh, balances on my forehead. I could do pinball. I could do s- stalls. Um, I felt like there were so many tricks. And also BBB, I really wanted to learn because that was really in at the time. Um, so, yeah, it, it made me um, a lot more excited about juggling balls. Um, and also... <laughs> it made a bit better at, at juggling. Um, I got my first symbol 7-Up 360 like two months, no, not two months, two weeks after I got the Norwich, um, I believe. I, I don't remember, but it was something like that. Um, so it took just, it take, took one week um, and then it felt normal. In the beginning, it, they didn't feel good. Uh, I, I'm, uh, I'm being honest, they, they felt really weird. And also, they felt really big for me uh, because at the time when I was 13 years old, my hands wasn't really big. But but now, yeah, I really like them. I think they're really good. That's awesome. It sounds like, I don't know, it's cool to hear somebody who's had, I, well, the things that you see on the website, you know, like the claims of the site, and like, you hear about these Norwicks, but then you hear somebody who's actually practice with them and actually seen those things come true um yeah norway juggling balls have gotten very popular all around the world and uh they're great for all juggling styles um and they're really helpful for stabilizing patterns i hear i don't have a name but after talking to both you and hovard i'm definitely yeah. getting some awesome and casey wood when i did an interview with her she um she also uses yeah. Norwex, but she doesn't yeah. really juggle like you guys. So, I uh, maybe she's I'm good though. <laughs> yeah, that's true. She's really good. <laughs> maybe, uh, do you, maybe the reason I want those balls is because I want to be as good as you guys. I'll let you know if they work magic. <laughs> it's the <laughs> ultimate test. Yeah. Um. All right. So one thing that you do a lot of is numbers, and. Uh, yeah. We already talked about why you do them, but I was wondering if you give some specific tips for how to practice numbers. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Um, one thing is don't start too early uh, with them, even though I'm maybe not the best example for that. Uh, but um, it, it's no, 
no reason to start with uh, numbers too early. You should get um, a wider foundation first before you, you push your limits. So, um, for example, w when I tried um, 10 balls, it didn't, uh, it didn't take too long. Uh, it took some months. But then from, yeah, so four years from when I started to juggle to when I flashed 10 balls. But from 10 balls to 11 balls, it took four years. Four years. And I don't know how many thousand attempts. It took, took crazy long, way longer than it should. And one of the reasons why is because I started practicing 11 balls way too early. I started practicing it right after I flashed 10 balls when I wasn't ready at all. So that's, that's one thing. If you don't practice, because practicing numbers doesn't really make you a lot, a lot better um, with juggling. It just makes you accomplish new tricks. Um, but practicing a bit lower numbers um, makes you better at juggling, and then you're going to spend a lot less time on doing the actual flash. But then you have to choose yourself. If you practice a lot of high numbers, you're going to get it before. Uh, then if you practice a lot of a bit long, uh, lower numbers and then go for the flash. But then you won't have to practice the higher numbers for as long as you would if you just went for it straight away. Um, and also, um, for, not for me, but maybe for some people, it's uh, not that inspiring to, to practice it because you don't really see a lot of improvement. But that's the thing you really have to look for. Because there are improvements. You know, when you see that your pattern, the first time you see that it looks good, remember that. You know, recognize that, okay, this attempt, the pattern was looking good. You know, I'm getting better. Okay, this time I did one more catch than I have done before. I'm getting better. And maybe write down well, every time you feel that you get better. And then you can see for yourself, you can uh, read through your notes that, okay, I've actually improved quite a lot from where I was some months ago till now. Um, and this will yeah, make it um, more inspiring to, to train numbers. Yeah. So, so I, I won't go a lot of in on the basic uh, techniques here uh, for numbers because that will take quite some time. But at least for, uh, for practice, uh, this is good. Yeah. Um, OK, and how can someone know that they're ready to try the next next number well um this of course um is different from what uh, what number you're talking about uh because you're not going to have a lot of catches with 10 balls before you try 11 that's just a fact but you could you know you you could have um 40 50 catches of nine balls and not really bothered of flashing 10 balls but if you just try to do 10 balls when you have 40, 50 catches with nine, you would get it quite easily. Um, so you have to, I don't know, if you feel, feel that you have some kind of control, you can run the pattern for, let, let's say, uh, four times or five times um, uh, the flash. So with nine balls, let's say around four to five catches, or with uh, seven balls, if you have... Um, uh, if you have around 35 catches, then you're you're ready to do the flash, no problem. With 10 balls, of course, you don't need to have uh, 50 catches, but, you know, but if you have done 14 catches and you feel that the the, um, the flash is solid-ish, uh, you could go for it. Really, it's just up to you. Okay, cool. Um, I've got some quick fire questions for you. Yeah. What's your favorite trick or pattern to do? Um, I think I just, or no, uh, that was a little bit different than the question I answered earlier. But um, uh, it, it's pretty much the same. Um, I, I, I could say 756 is a real nice one. And, um, and B9 7531, with, yeah, with clubs, balls, and rings, are really uh, a nice one. And, um, Nine five five five. Yeah. All right. Sweet. Um, what do you like to watch? To watch. As far mm. as uh, a juggling pattern. Yeah. Let's see. 
Um, well, that's a hard one. Uh, half shower is a real nice trick, I think. Uh, when people have a solid half shower, you know, with, with five clubs, with sometimes with uh, um, with it's going uh, when the spin is flat double or flat single or triple double, all those variations are really pretty to watch if they have it solid. Yeah, so half shower. Uh, favorite festival you've been to so far? Yeah, that was the um, Norwegian Juggling Convention, two thousand and ten. Okay, favorite prop to use? Clubs. Favorite brand of clubs? Um, yeah, now I I use uh, PX threes, but it the new version. So, uh, so the PX four, but uh, with a plastic dowel, uh, a light plastic dowel instead of um, the glass fiber dowel because of the weights, really. Yeah. Mm. Um, favorite music to listen to while you're practicing? Um, rap and rock. Now I got to ask you your favorite rappers are <laughs> favorite rappers um eminem um at least uh kanye west um yeah yeah let's say those two <laughs> okay like the two like most controversial rappers that's good um and let's see we already talked about who you look to look up to what's your best practice tip best practice tip um always be focused while you're practicing um, when you're in the hole, you're in the hole. Um, then you're juggling. Um, it's it's always better to have, um, let, let's say, if you have 10 attempts where you're really focused, that's better than 20 attempts where you just throw them in the air and don't really care. So, um, yeah, so always be focused on what you do. That will give you way faster results. Sweet. Um, all right, let's do some more questions. Everybody, last call to ask a question to be entered to win those balls. And let's see here. Fabian Reese, do you do shows? Yeah, uh, I do shows, but not a lot. Maybe one every second month or so. So, just sometimes. Hassan Sheriff, do you think that you'll still be juggling when you're 80? Um, I'll know how to juggle at least. Uh, I probably won't be uh, going to the hall and practicing, you know, but, uh, but maybe I'll uh, have some juggling balls at home. <laughs> I'm not sure. Yeah. From Hobart, if you had to study something not related to circus or juggling, what would it be? Um, uh, maybe... Uh, maybe a teacher in PE. Yeah. That that sounds like a, a fun job. Yeah. From Zach McAllister, if you could do any circus art except juggling, what would it be? Hmm. Everything except. Um, some uh, ground uh, acrobatics. Yeah. From Lucas... Uskowitz, are you going to EJC this year? Yeah, I believe I am. Yeah, I haven't ordered uh, tickets yet, but uh, I'm really sure that I'm going. Yeah. Sweet. Um, from Alex McGillivray, what are your other hobbies? My other hobbies? Um, yeah, I like, I like train, strength training and running. Um, and I've, I've had a lot of hobbies. Um, um, during my lifetime, um, biathlon, cross country skiing, uh, football, um, a little bit of climbing. Yeah. So, so there are a lot of things that I like to do. Cool. I, I sense a, a theme of athleticism here. <laughs> yeah. I like that. Um, Trinathon, what's the biggest obstacle you've had to overcome with juggling? Um, Okay, yeah, uh, I could talk about this. Um, so uh, when uh, when I was younger, I had um, this problem with actually releasing um, the objects. It was kind of um, a mental wall. I don't know. 
uh, this that stopped me. So, for example, if I was going to do five balls, I stood there, and then uh, I go down, and I didn't throw it. I just hold it back because it was just uh, a block in my brain. I don't know. I just couldn't release it. So I often stood like there, and then suddenly I did a pattern, and this kept going on from for some years actually. Also, when I was practicing seven clubs, I go like this, and and then I don't throw it for no particular reason. Um, and also, when I did um, three sixty tricks, where all the objects are in the air, so five club, five up three sixty, uh, five ball, five up three sixty, not five ball, three up three sixty, because then I hold two in my hands. But uh, those tricks, um, I had a really uh, a big struggle just throwing the last two in the air. For no no reason really, and uh, that's actually the main reason why I switched from uh, yeah when I do uh, even numbers, why I switch from starting with my right hand, which is my dominant hand, to starting in my left hand because I realized that okay uh, at some points when it was really bad, and I and I had this um, this block while just doing four balls. It's really stupid, but I just couldn't throw it. But then I realized, oh, when I did it with my left hand, I didn't have that problem. It just went smooth. Okay, when I start with left hand, it's good. And um, I decided, okay, let's do that. Let's always start with my left hand when I do even numbers. Um, and now it now it works really well. I don't have that problem anymore. Not even if I start with my right hand. Um, so yeah, I'm really happy that I overcome that because that was quite annoying. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah, that's a really interesting thing to think about, I think, for all of us, too. Um, obviously, we start with our dominant hand, but I want, if there's ever uh, a trick that we're having trouble with, maybe we should try with our less dominant hand starting. Yeah. Um, let's see. Let's do one last question, and then we'll wrap it up. From Christian Gonzalez, how do you set your juggling goals? Um how I set my goals. <clears throat> That's basically just taking my book and uh, writing down some goals, I guess. Um, and then when I've done it, I have just cross it out and, and it's good. Um, the thing is, I, I always have some goals in mind. Always. Um, but also uh, a lot of small goals in between. So, for instance, with seven clubs, of course, uh, 100 catches was a big goal. But then before that, you have 50 catches, which is also a big goal, but not as big. And then you have 70 catches. And then you have uh, 90, and then you have uh, 100. So, um, and yeah, that, that's the thing. Often when I've done my main goal, then it's kind of strange to be practicing in the hall. I was like, what am I going to do now? So I, uh, for me, I always need to have something that I'm working on. Um, even though I'm not practicing a lot of it uh, in that particular uh, time period, I need to have it in my back of my head that, okay, I'm working on this. Because that makes it, for me at least, a lot more motivating than just doing whatever now and then yeah now you held that book up and now i feel like i need to see it some more um this is like a little like a little juggling like almost like like planner slash diary yeah uh, not the diary really but um just when i think about something i i write down when i'm trying to figure out some side swaps uh, transitions i maybe write down the pattern uh the basic pattern the pattern i'm going into and then do some things to figure out the transition, for example. Um, and also, if I'm going, if I want to make a video, I write down uh, a list of tricks that I would like to do in the video. Maybe I don't do all of them, but at least some to uh, uh, remind myself of. Yeah, I think writing writing down stuff in general is a really good idea, um, and I'm excited to see like. Like those pages were just filled top to bottom in that little <laughs> glance we got. Um, so if you don't do that, everybody, and you want to get better, 
you should start doing it. <laughs> That's my bit of advice. What are you doing? Uh, you're tired? Uh, tired of watching bubble guppies. All right. Um, Ivan. Yeah. If people want to see your stuff, where can they find it? Um, they can just search up uh, Avin Drag Show. So with a O Drag instead of the Norwegian letter Ö, uh, as I have. So, um, yeah, just look up Avin Drag Show on, online and uh, you'll find my YouTube channel. Yeah. I could probably write it in the in the chat if you'd like. Yeah, go ahead and do that. And yeah. then yeah. the last word goes to you. What's some word of it? words of inspiration to the juggling community at large? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. When you go to practice, be be focused on your juggling. That's yeah, that's the biggest thing. If you're focused on what you do, you're going to improve, improve a lot faster than if you just kind of do it. So go all in. Yeah. All right, sweet. All right, everybody, just a reminder, Norwix was the sponsor of this episode. Thanks so much for tuning in. Um, this is the last video of this series. And hopefully next year, or not next year, later this year, um, look forward to some more panel discussions with uh, people like Ivan. So uh, until next time, keep on juggling.